Welcome, Trust Builders. I'm Sue Dyer, and this is Lead with Trust, where we explore how leaders can build their business on a foundation of trust and reap the rewards of becoming the top performer in their market. Leaders that understand how to use and leverage trust are uniquely positioned to disrupt their industry and dominate their market. Distrust of businesses and business leaders is at an all-time high. Trusted businesses must have trusted leaders, and your team, your customers, and your vendors are waiting for you to step up and elevate the level of trust in your business. My hope is that this podcast can help you start your trusted leader journey. Well, I'm so happy to be here, Sue. Thanks so much for inviting me. I'm so I'm so glad to have you on Lead with Trust because I just have loved learning a little bit about you and I want the listeners to learn about you as well. But I always ask everybody a, a weird question about your childhood. So here's your weird question. Okay. So when you were in high school, what group did you hang out with? What group? I kind of I kind of moved between groups, candidly. I wasn't so stuck. Like I was an elite athlete, but my elite athlete program, I was uh, external from the school. So I wasn't one of the cool jocks because I didn't compete for the school. Um, so I was, I was a very elite athlete. People kind of recognized and identified it. So I was kind of okay in that group, but I wasn't really in that group. I didn't get the, the spotlight, the cred that other athletes did. And I took school really seriously. So I, so I, you know, I, I, I kind of, uh, was interested in, Hey, what the smartest kids thought and what, what, you know, uh, being interested in academics. So, so yeah, so there wasn't really any one group I was in. Um, so, uh, and that's probably move, move forward. I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty, uh, uh, good with everyone, you know, really try to be open and, uh, and caring about everyone. That's cool because, um, it's interesting because what we hear from most of the entrepreneurs is sort of similar and it really does have a, it's, it's either, a, I don't know whether it's which came first, but right. it really does seem to be uh, consistent in our lives. Well, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah. yeah. And, and just, you know, and, and I think, I think a lot of that is, um, you know, what we make up about people, you know, oh, my story about somebody is this or in, in rather than just go talk to them and you'll be really surprised, right? Because we make up things based on what someone's dressed like, or do they have hair or not, or whatever it is, right? Or they're attractive or not. And, and instead, you go have a conversation with somebody and you find out, oh, wow, isn't that person really neat? They're struggling with the same things I am typically. Well, I can't wait for people to learn about your business and what you're doing and what you've done and what your mission is. So tell mm. us about it. Sure, sure. So so I guess uh, we um, recruit, train, and coach university students across Eastern Canada. There's a business as well who does it in the Western side of Canada to run their own home painting or home window cleaning business. Uh, so, so we recruit them all fall. We start training them in January or really in December, start going at it, you know, really on a very focused level in January, February, March, April, and then they go out and during May to August, during the summer season in Canada, they go out and they paint and window clean tens of thousands of jobs. We last year, we did $26 million worth of business. Our average operator did over $100,000 worth of business. You know, our average operator would have earned more than $20,000 uh, take home earnings as an entrepreneur. And this is in the summer because you're in Canada. So the paint season is much shorter. 100%. And as well, we actually, even if it was longer, we would focus for those four months when they're full time out of school, just because, you know, there's like, we're going to go recruit the best students on campus that takes an enormous amount of effort and focus for those four months. It's one of the reasons why our program is so good is, is that, you know, we literally shut our business so that we can be entirely focused on recruiting. Um, and then <clears throat> we're only supporting them around their school. So the average student spends 25 hours a week around their school. So that's obviously a really big, big commitment. They're, you know, tend to be taking, you know, tough courses in, in university and they want to learn how to 
sell and market and recruit. They really see this as a way to set themselves apart in the competitive environment uh, that that we're, we find ourselves and just more and more competitive environment. Um, and my 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 you know big hairy audacious goal is to create a thousand millionaires. So we've been we've been tracking for the last forty years and. We're, we're approaching 200 that have been identified. I know there's many more, um, but it, it's, it's hard to identify a number of decades in the business just because there was no social media and we kind of lost track of people, but, uh, but we're on, we're, we're, we feel very comfortable that that number is going to get done. And it's when I first used to talk about it, Sue, I used to say it once a year and not say it again for the next year until training because it was frightening. It was really, really frightening to think that we, we could have that big of an impact on people's lives. And, and now over time, we can just see that it's happening. It's, 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 uh, we're just creating an enormous impact. I, I have to tell you a story. I was interviewing a gentleman who uh, is very entrepreneurial and has created some extraordinary businesses, multiple businesses. Right. And I was interviewing him for this podcast and I was asking him, well, what is it that kind of led you to become an entrepreneur? And he was part of the painting company. Ah, yes. He was mentored and then decided that he wanted to branch and do other things. And I thought, well, there you have it. Uh, he's not the first one. He's probably about the fifth person that I've heard tell me that. Um, that in Cutco, you know, where they, they yeah, go out. And they yes, sell. that, that in, yeah. Yeah. So and it's a, really setting them up for a different mindset than everyone else has. Yeah, there, there, it's, it's, um, there's a number of organizations that do what we've done over the past four, four or five decades. The, the biggest, the granddaddy of them all, College Pro, stopped a couple of years ago. Uh, right across North America, they no longer do it. So <clears throat> there are not as many companies who do it. Um, I, I think it's because it's so difficult to do. There's just better ways to uh, to go make money. Um, and uh, and on, on the other hand, there are just so many people who have had that same same experience in their university, um, you know, years and 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 learning what it is to to go engage with a customer, have a have a great conversation, have them choose you over other people, and then provide a fantastic service that they're happy with, and they they pay a big check at the end of it. Well, I don't know any entrepreneur who wouldn't want that. So yes. <laughs> <laughs> let's learn more about what you do. And I know you have, you talk a lot about recruiting, you stop your business, you focus on recruiting. So tell us more about your recruiting, how many people you recruit, why that number, and uh, and how you build trust into that. Yeah, so so I guess uh, we, we, we will have somewhere between 280 and 300 students start our season, you know, uh, about 10% to 12% can't hit what we call our success requirements. We're big believers, Sue, that if someone can't win, if they're not gonna be profitable and successful, we'll stop them before they get started and really investing in their ladders, investing in their the, 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 the hardcore costs so that they spend some time trying, selling, marketing, recruiting. But if they can't do it at the scale that's gonna show that they can be profitable, we stop them, we have conversations and then they're, they, they exit, they, we shake hands, we move on. And so, um, and, and, you know, one of the challenges that we have is, is that it's not just a number that we recruit for, but we need to recruit people in every little small spot uh, that we have available territories. So, you know, if, if, you know, we have an available territory in Toronto, for instance, but, and we have a great candidate in Montreal, that really doesn't matter because that's too far. So, so we focus on finding students near their hometown, near their school where they can operate. I think one of the the biggest ways that that we show trust in our recruiting is is that you know we have 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 people literally plane rides away from us who are operating with our brand our our brand that we built for 41 years with our operating systems and they're operating alone on their own so it really shows an enormous amount of trust i know in in during covid we had a number of our provinces shut down and not allow people to go between the provinces. That's how, you know, seriously they took COVID in some parts of our country. So we had one area called St. John's, Newfoundland, which is on an island and Prince Edward Island, which is on an island. There were operators there where our support staff couldn't get there to coach them and train them. So we had to, for 
about eight months, we, the only way we were able to talk to them and coach them was over Zoom. And we were able to grow our business from going into the pandemic. I think out there we were doing eight million, eight, eight, sorry, eight hundred thousand dollars. And two years later, we we're doing two point eight million dollars. So, so it just shows an enormous amount of trust that we had in the people, and obviously trust that they had in us that we could coach them uh, to the success that they had. So even during the pandemic, I'm hearing you more than doubled in size. Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Let me think. Uh, yes, we basically came in doing uh, 12 and we left doing 26 million. Correct. Well, that's pretty darn amazing. So everyone needs to hear that uh, mm -hmm. also and, and know more. How did you do that? But we're just backing up one minute. I had a couple of questions sure. about recruiting people. So you talked about someone would come on board and you could pretty early, hopefully, that's my question. How, how do you determine whether someone's gonna be profitable or not? And how far into it are they before that? And I know you're probably trying to qualify them before they get into the door too, but if they get 100%. into the door, uh, what, does, what does that look like? And then before they get in the door, what did they have to do in order to get in the door? So um, one of the one of the great things, you know, if you, you, you know, smart, uh, you know, Jeff smart top grading, if you look at the best recruiters in the world, what they do is they look back on past histories of what have somebody done and they ask history best questions. So to see, oh, Sue, you've done all these amazing things as an entrepreneur, of course, you could do this. Well, we can't really do that as well, because students haven't done as many things, they haven't run a $100,000 business before. But the types of things that we found that are connected are, are they really elite athletes? Are, are, are they really, really great at something? So they've learned and created mastery in an area. Are they used to going to full-time school and putting 25 to 35 hours a week into something else, even if it's a part-time job? In that part-time job, did they, take, did they take leadership and where did that show up uh, with? What are their communication skills? You know, a, a huge thing that we're judging is ambition. You know, um, just just what's their level of ambition? What are they willing to do? What have they shown to do before in the past about working really, really hard? Um, so um, another big thing is there's no question a huge part of our success is we return 50% of our team every year. So so and those people provide another 80 of our operators who are referrals. So so people who are referrals, they already know the program works. They already know how hard somebody worked in the program to be successful. They don't have this idea that, you know, it's easy because you know how hard it is to be a successful entrepreneur. It's not easy. And, and so, um, you know, I, I, you know, so, so, so those are the, those are the, those are the big pieces. And then we set really, really clear expectations. We actually have people write us back, why won't you quit? Or write us back how much time you'll put in so that they're actually putting it in writing. They're giving lots of, uh, um, uh, lots of feedback back to us written in verbally. It's about a five-step process to get recruited um, with, again, lots of commitment, lots of uh, expectations. We're tracking to sort of see, hey, are they calling us back on time? How fast are they calling us back? You know, or how fast are they texting us back? You know, because one of the biggest things we just said We've got these people who are literally managing our brand hundreds of miles away, a thousand miles away. Well, if they aren't in communication with us, they're not going to operate. So, so we, we need to see these patterns of behavior and we see them quickly uh, in a good way. And, um, and, and, and Sue, by the way, as well, we do coach people in our, in, in, in our coach, in our recruiting process as well, because we'll see someone not do what we need them to do. And we'll say, Hey, what's the impact of not calling us back or let's turn this around and say it was a customer and it took you know 12 hours to get back what do you think they would think you know where's your phone you know it's right here you know we know it's right in your hand so you took 12 hours and it's right there what do you how do you think a client's going to see that we have them look at themselves and then we'll see how they respond sometimes we'll send them through another couple interviews just to kind of see again is that behavior changing are they coachable you know uh so so those are the things that we're doing before training. And then um, the most important thing is we hope that that gets everybody there who has is just laser focused and really wants to be there and really has big goals, big dreams, big aspirations for themselves. And then um, if, if we don't see it quickly, we just stop it. But we, we certainly don't like to see that very often, but sometimes that'll happen. And then, and then normally it's 
you know, going along, you know, can they, can we get them into that positive loop of winning quickly, you know, so, oh, yes, I can do this, I can do this, before, you know, they start getting into setbacks and, and maybe having some negative self-talk that they can't get themselves out of. So they're not doing the program. I love the, uh, this is a brilliant strategy. So you have 50% of the people who were successful last year are coming back every year. Yes. And they're the ones who are mostly referring the people who are going to come. So yeah. they're selling the people who are walking in the door on the program. 100%. So yeah. That, that, it's, that is a very brilliant uh, sustaining strategy. Yeah. And, and, uh, and I, I think and other businesses so could do that, but I don't think they even think about it. <laughs> Well, and I think really a big part of it is, is we don't have a quote unquote net promoter score um, that, that we've done, but there's no question in our business that, you know, our operators or those successful entrepreneurs are really our customers and they have an incredibly high, you know, belief in us and trust in us so that, so that that's what makes it work. And then another thing that we do, we have, you know, 20 or so coaches that coach all of the operators, but all those are not all, most of those veterans become coaches as well they become part-time coaches and they they look to lead them the, the rookies coming in they want to but they don't get paid to do it they want to do it some of them want to do it with the uh with the thought that in the future they they can become a, one of our business coaches but a bunch of them want to do it just because they want to give back they knew how hard it was last year it's really great being coached uh, by somebody else they it's just kind of a that's who we recruit into our organization people who are really you know, coaches. And, and, and so it makes it more fun to coach someone. So that's a big, that, that's a big strategy that is really works for us. What kind of, what level of coaching would you have? Like how many hours or what's the, the cadence for coaching for a, a, a new recruit? <clears throat> um, yeah. So um, there's a great book called the weekly coaching conversation. Brian Souza wrote New York times bestseller. And we loved it because it was written five, six years ago, and we've been doing it for 30 years. So shout out, Brian. I, you know, I just, I just uh, love the book. And so first of all, we have a weekly coaching session with each one, of our, each one of our rookies. Everyone in our business has a coach. And so then they also have a team coaching session on the Wednesday, so the Monday or Tuesday, depending how big the team is. And then there's a team coaching session on the Wednesday. And then they would also have another coaching session for sure later in the week with their, their, their coach, sort of just touching base. How's it going so far, Sue? How's your weekend setting up? What do you have set up? Um, so that's, that, that's a big part of it. We're, we're big believers. We have a philosophy about show, don't tell. So every part of our, our, our process, we teach them, you know, how to, how to market, how to engage people at the door and have them interested to come and need some window cleaning or need some painting. We teach them how to, set up an estimate so that the client is really excited to come and have you be selected on Saturday morning when you come by. So, so each step of the process, there are, there are scripts, there are, they, they, they learn from their coach how to do something and then they model it and then they, they record it now with the technology. It's fantastic because you can just record it. You can, you know, set, you, you can listen to the, to, to how the person did and, and see, see the, see the success of, of, of people and, 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 you know, just make them better and better. So it sounds like it's very turnkey. You have, you have all the components in there based yes. on years and decades of success on what they need yes. to learn. And so I'm thinking that probably builds a lot of confidence, trust in themselves yes. so that they yes. can do it because you're building the trust <laughs> one step at a time for each of them. And then they have a lot of support systems on top of that in case they feel like they aren't quite, uh, able to do it 100 percent, and 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 they won't all do it initially and that's part of it is as well and seeing that rather than seeing that as a as a bad thing seeing that as a natural outcome of course you're not going to get this the first time you know what it, it always surprises me when we have a group of people who just do they just go out and they just get ridiculous results right off the bat but of course you're not going to and okay what are we missing and then what do we need to improve to to, to make further strides and I think there's a lot of entrepreneurs, business leaders, government leaders that could uh, listen to that and take note because uh, I think a lot of times I see people recruiting people 
And then their training methodology is sort of Christians to the lions. Right. Let's just yes. throw them in there. Yeah. And those that survive, okay, we got somebody. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And <laughs> as opposed to helping them learn how to survive and thrive. 100%. And, and seeing as well, um, over the years, decades, we've just put more and more time, more and more, tr- more and more training, more and more Zoom calls, more and more scripts and recordings that people can listen to. And every time we do, just our averages grow. It's, 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 it is always getting rewarded. So um, I totally, I totally hear you. And, 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 I, and, you know, just doubling down on that, that, that training time is so valuable. I love that quote, training always gets rewarded. Um, One of the things that uh, I wanted to learn more about too was about the training process itself and also how do you get customers? I hope you're enjoying the show. Sorry to interrupt, but if you're looking to improve any area of your life, one of the first things you'll wanna do is to figure out where you are today and where the gaps are, and then really get clear on where you wanna go. Visionary leaders need clarity, like human beings need oxygen. It's essential. That's why my team and I put together a great starting point for you on your trusted leader journey. It's called the Trusted Leader Profile, and it will allow you to take charge of the atmosphere in your business by helping you understand your trusted leader style and how you can elevate the level of trust in your business. With understanding, you can make better choices and grow the level of trust and your results. For being a listener to the show, it's 100% complimentary for you to access the profile. All you have to do is go to www.sudico.com slash profile. And Sudico is S-U-D-Y-C-O. Again, that's www.sudico.com slash profile. I really believe that the profile will help you understand the norms you bring to your business and unlock the next level of leadership for you. I know your your painters are your customers or your your, your recruits. But but ultimately, how do we get our 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 customers to get customers? So so to answer training, we we uh, we do online training and in-person training. Last year we had to do all online training because Canada was so restrictive around COVID. And it just proved to us, though, that we could be tremendously successful online. We, of course, don't want to do online training um, exclusively in the future, but it will always be a a tool that we use because, you know, as Dan Sullivan of the Strategic Coach calls it, it's Zoom is the the great transportation device because look at us, we're together face-to-face, you know, and we're together. It's just like that where what's the cost of doing that and the travel, et cetera. And we've got this massive territory that we can bring everyone together for a Thursday evening and spend six hours. And we can have an alumnus who's running a hundred million dollar business come in and zoom in and spend a half hour and give them, give them a talk and share about what they've, they, they learned from the program and how it's impacting them. So that, that's, that's another way that we, we, we train, you know, in person or online as groups. And then we do a lot of one-on-one training. You know, how, how we get um, clients um, is a, a whole various group of tools, you know, um, home shows, you know, we expect home shows to be back. They were gone in Canada for a period of time. Um, we do a lot of canvassing, uh, lawn signs, flyers. We get a lot of our, our work online through Facebook groups and, and Facebook marketing, Instagram marketing. Um, you know, one of the things a, a, that, that we do a lot of, and we really um, Sue believe really firmly in is is the whole idea of canvassing, and even if we could deliver all the leads um, that we we that that a team could have, we would want someone to get really good at canvassing. And the reason is is because what it teaches somebody is I can it's it's like the thirty second elevator talk, you know. Um, how do I how how can I easily and quickly um, connect with someone? find out what they're interested in and deliver value, you know, and, and, and you know how you have to do that. Sorry. My experience, I believe is just lots and lots of reps. 
I was not a very good public speaker when I was 20 and I got started. And now I'm a really good public speaker because I got lots and lots of reps and, and, or I, or I guess I am what I am, but I feel I'm pretty good. And mostly I'm not, I am myself a hundred percent because I've just done it so often, so often, so often. So, so our, our operators communicate and entrepreneurs communicate so well and so effectively. And I really believe so much of that is learned at the door, you know, just, just, and we have, again, strips, uh, you know, scripts and coaching about how to just do that and just get comfortable. Someone says, no, laugh it off, move on. Someone's, someone's rude. Oh, isn't that funny? You know, and just, just being able to sort of just take that, you know, what people call as rejection, which it isn't, all we're doing is knocking on the door and seeing if they want some painting. There's no rejection there. You know, it's just, hey, you know, obviously not everyone needs painting. So, so it's just having a conversation and being good with it. Yeah, it's that's so I love that uh, philosophy of canvassing because uh, in my mind, uh, while you guys, the painting can't be done virtually or as a digital product, not yet yes. anyway. Yes. Um, it's true for every business, whether you're a service, a product, whether you're face-to-face uh, -face or whether you're digital, because you really need to be making those relationships and just yeah. reaching out to people and talking to them and finding out if you're a fit to help them or if there's something you could do to help them that isn't even within your business. Absolutely. Uh, I think that... Uh, how many times have you heard that in your life that you got to make those five phone calls or nowadays the Zoom calls or those emails or whatever it is, and we don't do it, uh, and that would make all the difference in your business. Uh, I know I'm guilty of that sometimes because I'll just say, oh, I'm just too busy. But it's truthfully, yeah. that's the most important thing you could possibly do for your business. Yeah, it just teaching people to be in action, helping hold people accountable to be in action, to go and to, to go and keep doing that. And, and one of the things as well that we find is, is that by doing that early in the season, they do way less later in the season because we have all these clients who have expressed an interest and we're calling them back. We're texting them back later in the season. They said, oh, I'm, you know, it's really snowy. I'm not interested. Okay, well, can we reach, reach back later? Yes, please do that. And there is something as well when you're the person opening up the conversation. People look differently at that, right? People so see that, wow, this person is keen, is motivated. And, and I think a huge part of our success is, is people love the idea of the young entrepreneurial person, you know, going out and they're hustling, you know, and hey, that's, a, that's, that's something that people really feel, uh, feel great about supporting. Yeah, which is what was sort of in my head as you were talking, because that to me is really your sustainable competitive advantage is that mm -hmm. uh, people want to help the students because they know they're helping them. It's obvious that you're helping them and you're giving them a chance and, uh, and then it gives them a chance to step up and prove themselves. Because yeah. a lot of what we've been talking about this year on the podcast is all about uh, trusting yourself and trusting, be able to create those high trust interpersonal relationships. And really that's what you're talking about. Having enough confidence to trust yourself, to yes. be able to do this, do go into maybe extremely uncomfortable places and, and do it anyway, and learn to succeed doing it, uh, as well as building the relationships, uh, whether it's inside the company or with customers, or with peers, uh, which may also start out being very uncomfortable, and yet you have a structure that allows it to happen uh, in a meaningful way so that it can become something that they learn. Because I think a lot of times the discomfort prevents people. So I love the fact that you have this structure around it. And of course, the track record, and then you have the people championing it so that other people will step up. So I think in your in businesses, uh, if ever, anybody who's listening to this, I think you can implement some of those things in your own business. Like, you, do you have champions within your business that could be helping to recruit people? And I mean, even inside your business for like Absolutely. initiatives that you want to have happen or things. I think we have you have you have so many keys to the kin kingdom in this business <laughs> that other people could be utilizing. Uh, and maybe they, they're not really thinking about it. Yeah. And, and so, Sue, there's, 
there's what I see as two sustainable competitive advantages. One is you're right. Clients just love to choose us. And, and so, you know, I feel a little guilty about that sometimes thinking that I'm not a student. And on the other hand, we have this network that supports literally thousands of students to work every summer. And that's what, that's what people are supporting. The other thing, and this is important for the listeners as well is, is that in the business, people, um, our students, one of the reasons why we're able to attract so many amazing people is because the VP of Home Depot is not going to go to the board or the president of Home Depot is not going to go to the board and say, hey, let's put students in charge of the Home Depot stores next year. Okay. Because that's stupid. And the Home Depot is not stupid. And, and you know, you understand that uh, an enormous 24 7, 364 day business, like most businesses are, you can't give a student all this opportunity, all this learning, all this growth as we do. And guess what? We actually are, um, you know, of course, our operators who are running their own business and developing it just at this enormous level, they're passing down the same leadership models to their teams. And they're having their teams go and say, well, look, you know, um, Mr. Mr. Smith over here, would you like the opportunity to open the job and close the job um, and, and take full responsibility for the job? And, and, and that, you know, again, it's not even more pay. It's yes, I'd like that opportunity to do that because I'd like to learn more and grow more. And, and so, so it's, it's, I, I so often hear people say, oh, you know, my staff just aren't into it, or I'm not, you know, people just, bare, you know, don't want to do it or w- want to do the bare minimum. Well, that may be who we're recruiting, you know, and, and, you know, and also what we're offering to them. You know, can we actually get our hands out of their work that they could do, get off their shoulders, looking over their shoulders and actually let them, you know, take more responsibility, take more control. And of course, you've got to have a limited, um, you've got to have checks, checks and balances to make sure everything's okay, make sure that they're winning. Um, But, uh, and a system and a process that's going to allow them to win. But that's something that really can take your business to the next level. I would agree completely. That sounds brilliant, actually, Mm -hmm. because um, I think the atmosphere that the leader creates is oftentimes uh, people are complying with what they're told to do, as opposed to feeling like there's an opportunity for growth and engagement and to learn more, uh, become more. Uh, I mm-hmm. think most businesses, I would actually say that most businesses don't provide that opportunity. And yeah. that's probably why we have so many people uh, resigning now, because they want to find a way to feel like they have more opportunity for control in their own life, but also just more opportunity to grow and to feel like they're doing something that's uh, worthwhile as well. Yeah. 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 So, so I have a question for you, as this business is evolving uh, and you've learned that you can double the size of the business using uh, online tools, which right. I know is not optimal, but uh, it seems to me that it also maybe takes away some of the geographic constraints that you might yes. have. So do you have any thoughts on growing the business beyond kind of the geographic area you've been working in? Well, I, I guess a couple of things. We are constrained. We have an arrangement with another family who runs the business really, really well in Western Canada. So, so we wouldn't go that way. And the United States, just like Canada, has really strict rules about people getting into their country to run a business. So, so and, and immigration, as you know, in the United States is a big thing. So it's very difficult um, to... Uh, run a run a business like ours um, if we don't have the senior leadership who are on the ground teaching them the things they need to do. So so that's something that that uh, is 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 not going to work. But we actually do have a, a program that my son and another senior leader are actually developing that is actually going to put our business in a box as an online uh, learning and training program that we're looking to launch this fall. Um, So it's, it's something that is, is in our future. Um, You know, how do we, again, 
you know, take all the things that we're doing and, and bring it, um, bring it to other markets. So I, I totally, I totally hear you. Yeah. That sounds exciting. You'll have to yes. let us know when that happens. Yes, I so will. No, I think it's really, it. yeah, it's really, it's, it really is very exciting. And again, I think, I think, um, entrepreneurship is a big thing. A lot of people want to be entrepreneurs and want to know how, and again, don't want to be restricted and, 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 you know, put in a box. Right. And that's, and, you know, and again, I, I, you know, it's, 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 you know, in my mind, we're always about creating leaders. That's really what we want to do in the, in, in what we're up to. Now, I know you and your wife have uh, run this business now for, you know, four decades. Right. Uh, what do you think is uh, your lessons learned as leader? Uh, what, what, is, what would you share with others about leadership that you've learned from growing this business? Yeah, so um, my, my biggest thing, um, one of the, sorry, one of the biggest things would be unique teamwork. So, so my business, my, my wife did not join my business until 2008, and I managed to, to grow the business to $5 million, but it was really $5 million with a cap. I, don't, I could not have created what we've created together on my own. And, so, and, it, and it was hard for me actually to see the things that I didn't get. So my wife came in and she's now the CEO of the business. I'm still the head coach, but really in many ways, we were CEO-less, as I like to say. We didn't have all the structures and the systems and the processes, you know, the office didn't run as well and as seamlessly. And, and over the years, she's just taken more and more sand out of the business, you know, and just, oh, here, here's the system. Here's the process. This is exactly how we're going to do it. And, and again, um, we also, we also have recruited um, more, uh, more senior leaders into the business who have also assisted me in the field in um, kind of, uh, delivering what we're delivering in a, in a, in a really powerful way. Um, I'm all concept. So it's, so, you know, we need the detail orientation. So, so one of the things, you know, for, for entrepreneurs listening is, is really taking a look at again, where your strengths are and who, who do you need to fill those gaps? Um, so that, so that you're doing, um, you know, another, another, another great concept that I'm a big believer in, 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 in business is, you know, you point to, you know, it's been decades that I've been doing this and I no longer need to do this financially and I'm still doing this. And, you, you know, well, why would you do that? Well, the only reason you do that is because you love what you're doing. And so, so um, one of the other concepts I'm a big believer that entrepreneurs look at is unique ability. What are they doing that they really love to do that gives them energy every day that generates great value that, um, and so, Again, when my wife came into the business in 2008, a big chunk of my time was being spent doing things I wasn't very good at. I was kind of, you know, barely competent at, you know, okay at, and more and more of those things taken away from me um, or, or, or again, delegated from me. And I'm, I'm doing coaching, I'm doing recruiting, I'm doing training, you know, run a podcast. Those are the things that, again, give me energy, love to do, create great value. And uh, my life really works and the business really works. Yeah, that sounds awesome. So it's, it's that multiplier factor when you have others on your team who are working to their strengths and you're working to your strengths. And, you know, you went from 5 million to 26 million. Yeah, exactly. Pretty darn good. Yeah. Pretty darn good. Pretty darn, pretty darn good. good. And, yeah. and, and also as well, when you think as well about, you know, being a leader, I think, you know, you know, Brené Brown, authenticity and vulnerability, right? So when you can, tell your team and be really clear with your team. Hey, I'm not very good at this. I'm really weak at this. I need your help. It actually allows just a huge opportunity. I always think about leaders who they're the smartest person in the room. They got it all figured out. And so, so it's like your team literally is watching you walk, you know, I don't know, into the wall or walk in tripping and they're laugh. And they go, oh, look, uh, the dummy, he thought he had it all figured out, right? Rather than Hey, I need lots of help. Who has ideas? We just had a five-day retreat with our senior team, and you know who has ideas. We can't figure it all out. You know, we're 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 you know need you to take us to the next level. We're all working together, and and again, when you can do that, again, 
vulnerably, authentic, authentically, and they can see, okay, you're right. I can see Chris is really good at this stuff, not very good at this stuff. And I can see that I'm needed here. Right. And, and so, you know, if we think about the enormous strides that we've made in digital marketing, well, it's 20 year olds who've been doing that. You know, my wife and I are not, you know, are not, well, me at all, but my, my wife, even she's a, she's got an incredible marketing eye, but you know, not, not, you know, uh, uh, doesn't understand that it's a completely different world and so 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 taking that but people seeing that there's an opportunity to grow yes absolutely well i just love seeing someone who is living trusted leadership and uh mm-hmm. It's just a, a delight for me. I, I, so I, I would like to two things. First, it's tell everybody how where they can get a hold of you, find out more about you, find out more about what you're doing, maybe about your podcast. Absolutely. So, um, so my 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 uh, business can be found at studentworks.com, and um, I, I can be found on LinkedIn. You know, Chris Thompson. I think it's slash SWP. And then my podcast is the Leaders of Tomorrow podcast. And uh, we've now approaching 300 episodes. um, And uh, we basically interview our alumni and our our student entrepreneurs, as is is typically what it is. So if you're interested in exciting, um, energetic conversation of students overcoming things, of, of, of people, you know, telling the stories of, of what they've accomplished, then you may be interested in that. Or especially if you're, you're older like me, and maybe you've got a son or a daughter in the 18 to 25 year old age, because that's really the avatar that we're speaking to, you know, uh, sending them to that, uh, to, to that podcast. Perfect. So one last thing to close out. I yes. always like to have one thing that you can give people a concrete thing they could do today that would begin to help them building trust in their business. Okay. Well, well, the, the one thing that everybody can do is, is, is take a look at your, your life and just where are you in integrity? Where are you doing what you say? Okay. So if you say to be on time for a meeting, are you on time for a meeting? Are you saying you're, you're, you're going to go work out? You're going to go work out. Are you saying you're going to be kind to your wife, be kind to your wife or whatever it is. And, 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 and so it's really, really, if you want to build trust in your life, in your relationships, in your business, the best place to start is with you. And the best place to start with is in your integrity, doing what you say, you know, and being the person you tell people you are. And that will be to trust in your business and in your life. Fabulous. Couldn't agree more. (laughs) I so appreciate you being here. And when you're ready to launch your, uh, you know, the uh, business in a box, uh, let me know and we will schedule another uh, event here. uh, And so that we can learn more about it, because I'm sure there's lots of people here who would be interested in learning more about that. Well, fantastic. Thanks so much. And I'm excited. I'm excited. We're, uh, we're, we're looking to launch, launch this fall. We're pretty excited about, uh, about, you know, this new venture and, you know, again, growth is exciting, right? You know, standing still, not, not, not much fun. You know, it's always about, Hey, how can we be the biggest tree we can be right? Provide the most value. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Chris. Appreciate you very much. You're very welcome. Thanks. Had a great time. Thanks. Sue. Hey, I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Lead with Trust and that wherever you're listening to this podcast, you will subscribe. And if you enjoyed this episode, send it to someone who you think can really use this message that you got today. And also, please leave us a review. You know, your honest review wherever you listen to your podcast would be much appreciated. And of course, the more reviews we get, the better they are, the better for the podcast. I'm truly on a mission to get more and more people to understand that trust is the essential element. So I hope you'll be part of that. You know, this show really exists to help you leaders to build your business on a foundation of trust so that you can reap the rewards of becoming that top performer in your market. I see over and over where no one can possibly reach the levels of those people that understand how to build a high trust culture in their business. 
Now today, if you're really curious about starting your trusted leader journey, you can get started right away if you just take the free trusted leader profile and you can learn where you fall along the trusted leader continuum. And this really can unlock your confidence on where you are and what you need to do. It's very specific on what you can do. Gives you a snapshot of your leadership style. So if you want to take that, just go to www.sudyco.com and then forward slash profile, and you will get immediate access to the trusted leader profile. Once again, that is www.sudyco.com forward slash profile. All right, that's a wrap. I just can't wait to hang out with you again on our next episode.